blinded by these very beings. They put a spiritual veil over people's eyes. This is why when you try to talk to them about these things that are going on in reality, you're like, listen, every drop of water you drink is literally poison. And they're like, I'll have another, you know, they're like, you're like, what the heck is wrong with you guys? You're literally drinking dead. You're drinking death, like continually. You think they can filter out those pharmaceuticals? You're drinking so much birth control that you can't get pregnant because you're drinking birth control on a regular basis. That's a serious problem, y'all. Like there's so much blood and death that goes into the drains. What do you think happens when they do an abortion and they cut up a human baby and they desiccate it and get rid of its blood? Where do you think that goes? Down your drain, down to your neighbor's drinking supply. And you wonder why our society is literally drinking in the blood. 80% of all the blood that's getting donated at these blood banks is going into pharmaceuticals that people are eating. They're cannibalizing each other on a continual basis. 20% is going to the hospital, and they're like, oh, yeah, we're just going to save humanity with this. All the while, the pharmaceutical industry is just designing more and more drugs on this. But this is Quetzalcoatl, and this is the very same deities that have been ruling and reigning over this nation for a long time. They were driven nearly into extinction. A man named Charles Finney. Y'all, you, you want to read a book for a second? Just hold on a second. I'm just going to stab this in the throat. Charles Finney was a man. There was in the, some people used to fight this crap and they used to lay down their lives and literally go to war against these secret societies, these oath keepers. Let me just put it a different way. The oath keepers, secret societies got too much of like, ooh, sexy involved in it. It's filthy, disgusting people that want to do all kinds of perversions. It's perverts. It's cults of perverts who want to protect and cover up other perverts from doing sycophantic evil that's what that's what these secret societies are and they masquerade and they balance it out you're like oh yeah we're gonna we're gonna do balance our, our good deeds over on this side with our evil deeds on this side so, you know we're like the shriners we're gonna dedicate all of these these funds towards these children and we're gonna go ahead and rape and consume their flesh out on another time and we're gonna balance the scales of gayatu and he's gonna accept us into his cult it's disgusting but this is literally they almost got driven into extinction by people that were willing to expose their secrets. They had all these infiltrators. I love double agents, okay? They had all these guys who went in and joined fraternal organizations with another motive in mind. It was so savage. They were salty and sneaky. They would go in, and they would document all of these oaths that they were saying, and then they would come out and publish their rites and their rituals in manuals and in books and in flyers. And they started awakening society to what these people actually were doing, to this other agenda that was taking place, to these serpent cults that were trying to resurrect these old gods. And they literally almost eradicated them, drove them out of our country. It, they came so close to being able to do it, they accomplished driving them underground again because they were trying to rise up again. And these were – they were so effective at doing that. Charles Finney wrote some incredible books on it and, and was one of those people who was speaking out against it. And I encourage you to, to, to seek it out. These are still preserved to this day. One of the things my dad did was to take me back down to Mexico, in Tulum, Mexico. And I got my scuba, I got my open water scuba certification. And then one of the things he was hell bent on intent of taking me was onto these temples to go into these, these little, they have these little, at the tops of a lot of these towers, they have this special chamber room where they would drink and they would cut the heart of a person out of their body and they would eat it. The high priest would eat it and they would drink their blood. And this is a way they would pass on this this life force through the priest class and ultimately to the king class and these are all still preserved today you can go down there today this is literally the the temple of the plume serpent these exist all over the united states you guys it's not like this is just mexico all over america these mounds are everywhere and under these mounds is the same kind of architecture it's the same gods doing the same kind of worship and and now this is in literally mexico city one of the most populous places in mexico that's literally where the the, the temple of the plume serpent used to be and this is what uh, one of the renditions of what it used to look like but Anyways, the reason this came in, these are other hybrids that have been around forever, lion creatures and all the rest of it. The lion men of Moab, you ever read about these things in the Bible? Anyways, this stuff just absolutely fascinates me because people used to carve this into stone. They were literally lion hybrids. They've been around forever. The hybrids have been around forever. They just got driven underground because our society is like, we're not going to tolerate that anymore. And they're like, okay, we're going to surface eventually. But these, these beings literally would be conjured during these rituals, and they would come up. And they would consume the life of the, the sacrifice, and then they would speak to people, sometimes telepathically, but more often than not, they literally spoke in the tongue of Nahash, of Nahash. That's a way of saying Hebrew in, or serpent in Hebrew. This, this is a different language called a twilight language. It's these other languages that these things speak to people, and they would literally speak to these leaders in this room and give them marching orders so that they would then go carry these out on the physical upper world. And this has been the communal exchange that's been going on for thousands of years between the old religion and their high priests. And then ultimately the kings, the corporations, this is how they're able to get these advanced technologies. This is how they're able to put themselves in positions of power because there is a driving mechanism, an ancient hand.
hand, a black hand that's guiding and directing these things, Halal ben Shahar. These are the shot callers that, that have been in their own prison cells, the fallen watchers, Simyaza and Azaz, Azazel and Gadriel. These are these ancient evils that have been around, these hierarchy that are still passing this information on to their assets. And this is literally the, the kingdom of darkness that we're wrestling with day and night. This is the city of London, who is the architect of the entire financial empire of the world. They still invoke these gods to this day because this is the masters of, of who – this is the ones who truly call the show. And this is the ones that I've been battling with my entire life and why I want people to have an understanding. We can get free. This was the book I was going to reference earlier, which is written by Josh Darnell. John Darnell. This is not available online. I cannot find it anywhere. I'm working on trying to create it into a PDF so people can have it. But this is called, the why, What Did Jesus Mean? The Gospel to Every Creature. Good news for Nephilim, transhuman, enhanced humans, and anyone else who is the result of genetic experimentation. John Darnell. This subquote is, The only way to view someone who is not 100% genetically human is to see a human being whose genetics have been modified. Then you can tap into God's heart for redemption. This is some of the stuff that foundationally was critical for me to be able to understand that there's still an opportunity for redemption for me. There's this bloodline tracing that happened for me that goes all the way through the Orsinis and then back to the Babylonians. And they believe literally they're inhibitors. They're, they're carriers of the seed of the serpent. They literally believe because they drink this black blood of these serpents that they get possessed by them and they have the divine right to rule as kings on this earth. And that what was in my blood. And so I believed I was cursed. I was anathema. I had never had a right for redemption and I could not be transformed into an image of just a mortal man, that I was destined to be one of these other things, these other creatures. And it wasn't until hearing people like this and testimonies like this, that in the, in the gospel of Mark, he literally said, go therefore into all the nations, preaching this good news to every creature. It was that word creature, which is not person, not man. He literally said creature that gave me hope and why I still today want to advocate for the hope of these hybrids, that these people, these beings still have a right to life and a right to an opportunity to hear the truth being spoken. Because like you, they've been beguiled since their birth, since their conception, no matter what they, what womb they came from, whether a laboratory or some kind of woman. Listen, you still have an opportunity for healing and redemption, and you have a testimony that the world needs to hear, whether they've abominated you beyond what you believe is your hope and your desire. But this is what you were born for, is to be able to find freedom, find a purpose, find a mission, and be able to serve in, in, the, in the true kingdom of truth.